y'all. Welcome back to another week of Bible Fun with BB. You can see I've almost waited to night time to do it tonight. This is Tuesday night, and I don't know when this will air, but I wanted to go ahead and tell you where I am right now. I'm in the backyard of Brother Will's house. It's kind of a neat place to be in the evenings. It's really cool and shady out here, um, but it's just a great time of the year to be outdoors and enjoying um, things outside. Um, last week, you know, I started to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk about. I'm going to do a little bit of a series for you guys, um, and that's going to probably keep us busy until it's time to do some Christmas lessons. But um, I kind of want to go over some of the information that we have. This is the new Bible drill material. Of course, it's not very fancy. I made a photocopy of it. But these are our Bible verses that we have. And then we'll have some key passages. Uh, the story I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with tonight is one of the key passages, but I'm gonna kinda go over some of these verses. Um, and then I kinda wanna talk to us about short, short snippets of books of the Bible. Um, we, in passing, we had talked about a little bit about one memory verse, which is Proverbs 8.33. And it says, listen to instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. That's Proverbs 8.33, and um, uh, we're going to work on that one again. And then there's the, another one we talked about, and I, I mentioned this one one time. It was uh, Psalms 54.12. I'm sorry, Psalm 54.2. And it says, God, hear my prayer. Listen to the words from my mouth. And that's Psalm 54.2. Now, let me go ahead and be up front with you guys. I don't know these verses. And so my challenge for myself is to learn these along with you this year. So that's, that's our first two verses we're going to memorize, are Proverbs 8.33 and Psalm 54.2. Uh, and we'll, we'll add one every other week that way. But to this week and next week, we're going to concentrate on those two verses. Uh, and I'll say them again after we close so we'll know them. And in... Uh, and, and, We've been going through the whole books of the Bible, but let's stop and talk about part of the Old Testament and part of the New Testament. And this should be pretty easy if you know the books of the Bible at all. In the Old Testament, the first five books of the Bible are called the books of the law. And those books are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Five books of the law. Let's try that again. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, that's in the New Testament. Oh, excuse me, Old Testament. All right, in the New Testament, the first four books of that of the New Testament are the Gospels. The word gospel means good news, and the reason why they're called the Gospels is they tell the story of Jesus' life. And those are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So next week we're going to add some to those, but we, I want us to really concentrate on knowing those. And if you look at your Bible, I'm going to open mine to show you. If you wanted to look for the first five books of the Bible, you would start at the beginning, and you can see at the top of every page there's a book. Genesis, I've looked at Exodus, there's Leviticus, there's Numbers, and then there's Deuteronomy. And if you look to the New Testament, let's get over there, you'll see, okay, here's Matthew, turn a few pages, and there's Mark, turn a few more pages, there's Luke, turn a few more pages, a few more pages, Luke's kind of long, and then there's John. So, so do that this week. Take your Bible and thumb, and thumb through that and look for those books, okay? Now, um, also with Bible Drill, we have... Ten passages in the Bible, ten groups of verses that we're hoping to learn. And um, the very first one I'm going to talk to you about is going to be the creation. And of course, you know, we talked about the creation in last time when we were talking in Bible drill about Genesis 1 1. Of course, creation can be found in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 through like verse 3. So if you wanted to read about the creation story, that's where you would go. It's Genesis chapter 1 all the way 
and start chapter 2 and read chapters 2 verses 1, 2, and 3. That's our first key passage we're going to learn. And next week, I'm going to show you how to look for it and, and what happens in Bible drill when they ask you to look for a verse like that. But the last key passage that is on this sheet is the one I want to talk to us about today. Uh, you know, last week I talked to you a little bit about wrestling and fighting and how Jacob wrestled with God all night and, um, and God managed to, to tell Jacob, and Jacob said, I won't go, let you go unless you bless me. And, and um, the man that, you know, people say might have been God himself changed Jacob's name to Israel. And, cha and it changed his life when wrestling with God. And so, you know, that kind of gave, you the, gave us the image of a fight. So I want to go to another passage that does the same thing. And this is one of our key passages. This is called the Christian's Armor. And it's in Ephesians. You'll see my Bible is open to Ephesians chapter 6. And... Um, the verses that are part of this key passage are verses 10 through 20. And I read verses 10 through um, 12 to you last week. It's when Paul is telling um, the people that he's writing to is to be strong and take courage that, that the battles that we're fighting are not against people, but are against the evil, what the devil is trying to do in our world. That's who our fight is with. And then going on and starting in verse 13, he starts to talk about the various pieces of the armor and he's talking about what God gives us to fight the battle against evil in the world. Now, when Paul wrote this, more than likely he was in prison or he was uh, you know, arrested or something, but more than likely he was either really close to or even chained to a soldier. And so as he's writing this letter, I imagine him looking at that soldier and seeing what that soldier has on and talking about that in terms of, of the way God wants us to, to be ready to, to fight the battles of, against evil. So the first thing he says, and he goes on in, in verse 13 and says to get ready again. We've, it's more than we can handle on our own. And he says to take all the help you can get, every weapon God has given you, so that when it's all over, you'll be the one that has the victory. And then the thing he tells us to do, the first thing he says is to put on the belt of truth. Now, today, most people consider a belt as something just to hold your pants up, which is true. That's what a belt does. But now I can imagine Paul looking at this soldier with this big belt around him. Now I don't know if you've ever seen like people who build houses and they have their tools in their belt, their paint, their painters that wear belt and have all their paintbrushes and stuff in it. Um, one of my favorites is is Batman, and and one of the things that Batman always has, he has every tool imaginable in his utility belt. And so everything right there is needed. But the Roman soldier that Paul was more than likely close to had a big, the belt was not a thin little piece of leather, it was big and wide. And, and this is why back then. It was probably made of metal. And I don't know if you've ever seen anybody lift weights, but they, they sometimes they have a belt so that their back won't get messed up while they're lifting weights having that belt makes them stronger. I don't know if you've heard of your parents that are exercising and all that. They're talking about working their core muscles. You know, that they say that everything, all of your strength, all of your um, power that makes your legs go, your arms, your back, makes all that strong, comes from here. And so I'd like for us to think of the belt as, as making us stronger is making us more powerful to fight the fight that God has put us in, the fight that we're in against evil. So we can think about that that way. And also, um, that big belt in this part of our bodies is our, is our important organs like our liver and our stomach, things like that, that if they were to get hit with an arrow or something like that, it'd cause a lot of damage. So 
not only does the truth strengthen us, it also protects us. So let's think about the three things that the belt of truth does. Helps us keep our, keeps us ready with the tools that we need. It makes us stronger and it protects us. So when Paul says to put on the belt of truth, what does he mean? What is the truth? This is kind of something different, but I want to share with you something else. In John chapter 14, this is one of the Gospels I just told you about. John 14. In chapter, in verse um, 6, Jesus is telling the disciples, you know, about the way to the Father and, and about how to live life. And um, Thomas is telling him, you know, he says, you know the way to go. And Thomas says, Jesus, we don't know the way to go. And Jesus says this, and I want you to listen to this and, and put it together with what we were just talking about, the belt of truth. Jesus tells Thomas, he says, I, Jesus, I am the way. And then he says, I am the truth and the life. And that's where I want us to camp, on the truth. The belt of truth that we should use to keep our tools nearby, to keep us strong, and to protect ourselves, that belt of truth is Jesus Himself. Let's think about that. Whenever we're faced with evil and temptation and in the world, call on, rely upon, depend on the belt of truth to protect you. You know what's the worst thing is if you were to go off in a battle and you didn't have everything you needed. And you know, sometimes I do that. I think I'm going to go off and I'm going to, um, you know, stand strong for Jesus in the world. But then I forget some of my weapons at home. We can't forget the belt of truth. That is the most important one of the most important things that we need. They're all very important, but I think that's why Paul said it first. Because if we don't have this protected, if we don't have, or if we don't have the strength we need, then it's going to be mighty hard to fight the battle against evil like God wants us to do. So let's do that. Let's arm ourselves with the belt of truth. All right, I'm fixing to pray for us, but before I do, I want to remember, remind you of what we want to learn. The first five books of the Old Testament are the books of the law, and they're Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the first four books of the New Testament are the Gospels, the Good News, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's remember those, and, and I just pray that you'll have a great week and I pray that you in every day that you go out that you arm yourselves with the belt of truth that Jesus is the Son of God and He loves everyone and He is the reason why we can have a life in heaven forever. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you are the truth, that, that everything else compared to you is just, just wrong and just, the, just a lie, Lord. I just pray that everything we look at we would look at it the way that you would so that we would know truth. Lord, I just pray for these children. I pray that this lesson would help them to understand how important it is to, to, to stay close to you, to, to arm themselves with you, uh, to protect against the evils of the world. Lord, bless our church and bless our community and bless our nation. Lord, I just pray that you would um, speak peace to us all and I pray that we would learn to love each other a lot more than it seems we do now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.